Hello. Excellent. We are recording, so let's get started. All right. So we'll start with the reapplying projects. And I think YARP was the first on the list. Um, so I, as I understand, and this applies to YARP and it also applies to another project on the list. I think this is library components rather than standalone. And please correct me if I'm wrong in understanding that. And I'm not sure whether we, we have projects that include client libraries, but I'm not sure we have any projects that just are library code. And I feel like that's a, you know, something we should consider whether we want to. I think, first of all, does anyone disagree with my belief that um, YARP is library code rather than a standalone project. Hey, Justin, we've got Justin as well. Sorry, I'm late, sorry. We were just starting to talk about YARP and I was saying that I believe that YARP and also another project, which I will, will come to at some point, but another project on this list is library code rather than a kind of standalone thing which might be okay, but I'm not, I couldn't think of anything that is library code. Might, we might have client libraries as part of a project, but I couldn't think of anything else that just is, you know, and whether that is something we want to consider in terms of whether something is appropriate for CNCF or not. I mean, the first question is why wouldn't it be? I suppose that my thought process on this kind of came through, well, you know, does this particular solution that's, um, you know, C sharp, you know, which is fine, that's, it's perfectly valid for people to write applications in C sharp and .NET, but do we want to be I, I, I don't know. I just thought GRPC is a library. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think. Okay. I think it, I think it is. I actually I was actually agreeing with you, and then I was trying to think through project. But I think GRPC is strictly a library. It's, we didn't bring it as a spec project. It's it's a multiple libraries for different languages, but it is mm. definitely a library, and that's how you consume it. And that it's it's unusual. I think because cloud native projects are often consumed as services or shared as services, but actually it's not totally out of. Out of so one, one another yardstick is um, for gRPC, we have so many different projects that use gRPC, right? Uh, here, YARP is coming in and there is no consumer of YARP as such. So that's the distinction between YARP and gRPC, I guess. I don't think we really use that yardstick for sandbox as much uh, mm -hmm. since it's supposed to be for incu uh, incubation and innovation. True, but we have to believe that it is a good fit for the CNCF. And I Certainly. I guess I just, I, when I, and I appreciate that GRPC maybe already is the precedent, but I think I was, I was worried that we're going to have, it opens the doors to a lot of, you know, library code that uh, fulfills some small part of the cloud native, you know, functionality and whether or not we really want to be drawing a line outside of that. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm partly struck by just the sheer number of projects as well and, and wondering whether we're uh making things easier or making things more confusing by including yet another class of project no pun intended on the name <laughs> uh, i i do i do think the kind of justification for why it's not in dotnet foundation and is kind of weak 
Yeah. Because it's, it's I mean, the, there's the comment and the linked issues, which is just kind of like, we want to make it more, we want to bridge .NET and Cloud Native. And it's like, that's great, but um, it still feels like one component out of many is in, would be in CNCF and the, everything else in the .NET ecosystem is in the .NET foundation. And it just feels kind of weird. Yeah, that yeah. seems like a reasonable argument. Uh, well, the other way to think about it is like how many who will be using this and how many of them will be using it or like how is it going to spread, right? Um, to be useful in the CNCF ecosystem? And do we see projects depending on this um, that will essentially go into any of our um, usual deployment models and things like that, right? Um, that would be the fit that we look for. And I don't see it yet. So perhaps, uh, as Chris is suggesting, the um, the .NET Foundation might be a more suitable foundation for this. Why can't I see see the? Uh, why can't I go back? It's basically <laughs> how? how what? <laughs> it's like I'm new to computers. What has yeah, happened? Just work sometimes. Just sometimes. <laughs> Why can't I see the? Uh... <laughs> Maybe that's what I need. That's what I need. Except ah, there we go. I need a whole other tab. Right. It's also not clear to me who the maintainers of this project are and how what its governance process is. It does not feel to me like it is a very natural fit, personally. I mean, it's very much a Microsoft project with a Microsoft CLA right now, and then I'm not sure it's got yeah. non-Microsoft usage. If we don't say no to this, what else will we say no to, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we want to hold a vote? Shall we? Or does does anybody feel that they would be voting yes? <laughs> no. <laughs> we should just right. do a vote, Liz, and say no. We probably should. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, I agree. Cool. Yeah. Well, and it's not just um, the Microsoft comment either. I think it's just as it's not a good fit for what we see being a yeah. viable project. Yeah, it feels I, I think this this whole question of, you know, how it fits with other cloud native, you know, if there's nobody else already using it. I mean, the I, I do think there is a, a question mark over library projects. It, .NET feels like a more sensible home for it. All right. Is that enough? Okay. Uh, what was the next one on the list of um, repeats? See, please. Pixie. So Pixie have definitely, uh, when Pixie came up last time, I was concerned about them having a uh, link in their uh, GitHub to their self-hosted, sorry, their, their own hosted version of Pixie. And they've sort of, they've, they've made some improvements there. They, they've, it's not like on the first page of the um, GitHub, but there is still, and, and I kind of understand why they have it, right? It, I think it's quite hard to set up your own hosted version of Pixie. So there's, 
kind of saying, you know, for an onboarding experience, come to our version that we already host. It is not clear to me who is operating that. And, you know, it is still, not unsurprisingly, it is still linked to quite um, heavily from the kind of getting started documentation. Um, do we have any other examples of something where the project hosts a version of the solution like this? <sighs> it's like a demo backstage server, but that's a little, a little different, right? Well, it's it, Artifact the question hub. is whether or not you have to sign up. Yeah. Yeah. Artifact Hub is the only. Yeah. And Artifact Hub is operated by CNCF, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And could we operate this hosted version of Pixie? It's a good question. Potentially, we'd have to figure out what the costs are, but having other vendor, I'm assuming they're done in a way where other vendors could go operate this on their on their own if they wanted to. Presumably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they have got like the full, the repo has apparently everything that you need to, yep. to run your own version does anybody run it already other end users they, they do it <sighs> i know there's an aws collaboration i'm sure new relic who bought pixie is doing something with it I'm trying to go i assume new relic are essentially hosting the uh, yeah <laughs> Probably. Yeah. They paid for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think AWS said something that they plan on uh, at least contributing to the project. Yeah. Which is cool. And I, 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 I would really like to find a way for this to come. What I'm worried about is the precedent of, oh, you know, you can operate your own website and essentially have the CNCF funnel you people who sign up for your... The, that we would not allow. That is yeah. not allowed. That's against our policies. You can't have like a sign up form or or harvest harvest emails that way. Right. If it's a demo server, like a backstage thing, that's completely cool. All maintainers have access to that. My assumption is here they'd probably just do like a demo thing running on the CNCF cluster. That's, right. That's probably. Um, what I would do, and I'm guessing New Relic, AWS, others will offer probably hosted SaaS-based offerings for, for this. Yeah, yeah. And probably like other things, if there's like a hosted version of something, their project page can, you know, so long as it's prepared to list all of them, it can list them. Yep, alphabetical order, yeah. just like Envoy and a bunch of other projects that, yeah. that point. Yeah. What, what did we ask them last time? Uh, and they came, we had to revisit. Oh, let me go find it. We asked about whether it was all the repos being open source, yeah. which they said it is. Yeah. Um, and I think they were forming some type of governance structure also. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll I'll show you the thing. I mean, you know, it's not. I I completely understand why this is here, but you know, you go through quick starts, yep. and um, you know, it it tells you you can. Oh, I can't even find the version. Oh, here we go. You know, there's this Pixie Community Cloud, mm -hmm. which, which saves you from deploying it, and which is um, on with pixie.ai or maybe pixielabs.ai or yeah. both, which are not yeah. listed in the domains that they're going to transfer to CNCF. Yes. And and which so is, then you end up here with a login. And yeah, so my, the question is, is with Pixie and Pixie Labs, are those domain what is going to happen to those domains in the name? Because if they 
they get to host a a Pixie service with a with Pixie in its name and other people don't, then that's a problem. I mean, if it's just they manage service for this and it's all open source, that's fine, but they can't presumably do it under the trademark of. No, it would, it would have to be, you know, new relic blah, you know, with pixie or for pixie type type setup. Yeah. So the only other thing I can think of is, um, rename pixie to something else and we, we get to host only the sources. Uh, we don't care about uh, the website or whatever service they are running. Well, I, th I think we need to just get them to clarify what their plan is going forward with this and what what the brand what the branding of this would be, and that it will be a Pixie service, not the Pixie service. The, the, the trademark they're for sure going to transfer over. That I have clarity on. Yeah. It's the question of like, you know, there, whether this demo service runs on the CNCF cluster or New Relic or AWS offer their own like hosted things, which is fine as long as they name it, you know, appropriately, right? The one thing I don't know if y'all have noticed, I was just flipping through this, the mm -hmm. docs. When you start on the doc that is linked from the application, you are on a .dev site. If you click on the link to the the hosted, if you click on the Pixie Community Cloud, you move over to a .ai site. Yes. The documentation looks exactly the same, but it's all under this other domain. Yeah, and that domain is not on the list that's being transferred, whereas the other ones, right. PX.dev and Pixie.io, Mm -hmm. are listed as being transferred, but yeah. not the, not the other. But one. all the rest of the docs are under that .ai and they look exactly the same. The table of contents doesn't change everything else. So it's pretty sneaky. Well, I mean, I, I didn't say sneaky. I think it's I mean, because this was their service that was acquired. Yeah, I, it's being open sourced. So I think it's okay to have transitional issues, but we need a clear yeah. delineation of what's happening, I think. Yeah, we could ask them yeah. about the domain. I think Pixie AI was the name of their company, I believe. Yeah. That was purchased. Generally, we would ask for that domain to be transferred over as part of the process. But if they're not using it in any fashion, then we don't care. As long as it's not confu as long as it's not confusing to end the end users, like if that domain is no longer being used, we don't care. But the Justin points, I view this as like a transition thing where, you know, as part of onboarding, we kind of deal with this whole um, thing. There's, you know, we've run into other projects that we've had to explain to them how, like, here's, you have to list all the services that, you know, people are building upon in alphabetic order and a fair, fair way and so on. So I don't see anything too crazy outlandish here. So, so do you think we can go to a vote with the sort of proviso that they would need to resolve this community hosted site and the use of with pixie.ai and the you know the sign ups yeah. here on the harvesting emails like you just can't do that right there would have to be some other you know if the, if the yeah. if new relic runs their own service they could go for to their heart's content right but it can't be um you know something that they run with that name right form. Yep. So should we have a vote on the assumption that those things are resolved as part of transition? And because they have to be, because otherwise they couldn't be in the CNCF. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think the next, uh, we can probably talk about them together. There's Meshery and SMP, which was Service Mesh Performance, if I recall. Um, so when we discussed this last time, we were um, 
talking about how um you know we have the service mesh interface already we have service mesh performance and then meshery which kind of implements some of these things and uh we went to sig network where we have the interesting scenario that um SIG network is essentially being run by Lee and he's also involved in all these projects. So I guess the good thing about that is he knows what's going on. Um, but he did go out and have a conversation with lots of maintainers on the service mesh interface project um, and meshery and SMP. I think there are a couple of things that we've learned from that. One is that SMI is uh, potentially an at-risk project I would say it's not going from from what I hear there there are some issues there in terms of its support from its own maintainers um I think there is some potential for SMI and SMP to be kind of better aligned there is interest from people outside of the existing maintainers um some some other companies who want to get involved in SMP and want to see it in the CNCF before they do so. Um, and then Meshery, uh, the project I would say is very clearly saying we are much bigger than both SMI and SMP and we want to have a life independent of those two spec projects, which it, I think is not unreasonable. So my own feeling is that, yeah, we should treat Meshery sort of, you know, separately. SMP seems like it's one of these areas of experimentation and collaboration and that we should be signaling to SMP and SMI that we want to see, you know, if we're going to have like a definition of what service meshes are, let's try and make, I don't think we're going to see one of them. We're not going to see both of them incubate without a very clear, agreement between the two did that make sense so do we want to vote for meshery separately right now yeah i think we should be voting on both meshery and smp as separate sandbox projects and then if they pass i think we should be signaling through sig network that we want to see smp and smi you know, not diverge, at the very least not diverge. Does anybody else have any other sort of points they want to make about either of those two projects? Okay, should we do votes for, let's do Meshery first. Erin, I think you've sent me a vote directly. <laughs> oh, Erin, if you send it over in the main, we, we will pass. There we go. Thank you. Great. And let's do votes for SMP as a separate project. Oh, and I've sent it to Erin. <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, SMP. All right, so now we can go back to the top of the spreadsheet and the new applications. So uh, port, Porter LB, um, I, and noting that we already mentioned Metal LB, I think there's there's a, a couple, maybe three, maybe even more uh, load balancer projects all throwing their hat in the ring at the moment. Um, So Porter 
name collision seems to be a bit of an issue. I mean, I, sorry, I have an issue with them not filling in the form. I, I know what you mean. It's, yeah, it's mostly, it's mostly blank. I'm sorry. That's yeah. a hard no. <laughs> process <laughs> yes not having we made the process really minimal but if you can't if you can't do that then i'm sorry all right do we want to vote for that or do we want to just bounce it back and say a you would have to change your name and b you would need to complete the form I think that, yes. Yeah. Because if they did both of those things, we might in future accept them. All right. Yeah. But given how many different load balancers there are, are we going to have a stronger differentiation at the sandbox level than we would normally or not? Like I think it, they, ha they haven't submitted the, the difference uh, between them right. and other uh, load balancers for bare metal, like metal, yeah. for example. So I guess, I, guess what we're, I guess what we're saying is we can't, you know, we can't really consider the application very thoroughly because they haven't really filled in the form. And it's always possible that there will be more competition and we might not accept them in the future because, you know, there's no, there's no guarantee and there might be too many load balancers. So we have this uh, we have this field explanation of alignment and overlap with existing CNCF projects, and it's optional. Should we make the requirement? I'm not sure why it's optional in the form. The description isn't option, is it? Is it? Uh, the description is not. But uh, how, how did they get that? Yeah, this yeah, one. We should, yeah, we should we should ask them to fill in the description yeah. part and yeah. as well as the uh, explanation of the overlap. I think. Yeah. Although they are optional, but I think they are very useful information for QC to make the season, in my opinion. I think so too. We have so many projects and it's important to understand the overlap with the existing projects to see how it differentiates. I agree, yeah. Can we make that alignment field into a non-optional? I will check in on that. All right. So, shall we move on to Cube Vela? Um. Just a, one question on the previous point. Are we sure we didn't override the, the content after the submission? Because I think this is it, the one. Oh, you think maybe somebody has inadvertently Not changed it? And did an undo or something? There is, a, there is a deleted. Okay. Is there? Because um, if you tap space on any cell, it just overrides the whole thing. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Um, uh, but it appears to just say Bors or LB is an open source load balancer implementation designed for bare metal Kubernetes clusters. Uh, How did you find that? How uh, right click and there's a show edit history new yeah new feature in google docs Ooh. just, uh, just <laughs> created just in time for this meeting <laughs> nice all anonymous users deleted it it doesn't have a way of restoring it <laughs> easily as far as i can see 11 days ago yeah so they did yeah i was just testing now and actually you you can just mistype something and just override yeah, all. yeah. I, so I still, okay, that that isn't fair on them. <laughs> I still right. think it doesn't change the naming issue, right? So yeah. So they would have to change their name. I mean, we we could vote on whether we want to accept them on the assumption that they do agree to change their name. Up to you. It's it, you know, it's got, it's got some interest. I think there is the, 
the fact that it comes from a cube, the cube sphere distro. Does anyone know the major differences between Porter LB and Metal LB and any experience? I see both of them have applied. I've, I've, I have, let's say, come across, not used myself, but I have been sort of adjacent to some usage of Metal LB. Um, which I think has some some good points and some I have heard people concerned about scale, but you know that is probably indicative of the fact that they've been using it at some scale, so it is real. But yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, Dims, you're sending us a link to comparison of the two. Is that? Uh... There's not much there, but uh, you know. How is it packaged and how is it uploaded? That kind of stuff. Should we request project owners to submit the the difference or explain the difference? Uh, but then we have to go uh, tell both of them, right? Like we have to tell yeah, both and Metal LB to do the same. Yeah, yeah. And we have yeah. usually, you know, we have that idea of the sandbox being potentially a right. space right. for competition. I've got to say, something else I didn't love was the fact that um, they put on their README, they put the CNCF logo because it's been accepted to the cloud native landscape. I hadn't seen that done before. It feels a little <laughs> bit cheeky. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm, also yeah. out of, I'm also out of it, Andrew, about it. Because it says it's a sub project of CubeSphere, is it? I mean, it, it cannot be a sub project of something that's not in the CNCF once it's in the CNCF. And how independent is it? And is CubeSphere potentially going to was in the CNCF? Because it seems like if it's a sub project, then it's saying it's not independent. Right. And it and seems then, like it's a consulting company. Interesting. Who is? Um, Cubesphere. Is it? I thought. I thought it was. Uh, some... I think it's a distro. I mean, yeah, it might be a company. But it is a dis. It is a distro, but uh, it, it it is a company at a distro. Uh, you can think okay. of it like a rancher in China, something like that. Yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, uh, the only other thing that I can add is um, I, I I haven't. I didn't run across the name in any of um, Kubernetes related mailing lists or um, you know repositories or anywhere else. So it's brand new to me. I guess also, I mean, there's a there's a language thing. I mean, it's a sub project of Kubesphere, but if it's if they had phrased that as uh, I don't know, Porter LB is a project created by cubesphere that would be that would be okay and we would assume that means well they they were the founding makers but they decided to contribute it that that would just be a transitional thing wouldn't it so do we vote now with the caveat that we'll work through the separation concerns later uh, I mean, I the, 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 the owners are a subset of the CubeSphere owners. But I think that's okay for Sandbox. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. If, it, if it's intended to become independent. And it's, I, I think I saw um, separate uh, installers for standard OpenShift uh, uh, Kubernetes and uh, K3S and things like that. <coughs> it's right in the main page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See. Yeah, Kubernetes, K3S, and Kubesphere. Right. Yeah. So from that point of view, I think it's it's okay. Uh, what's it called? Porter. Subject to name change.
Erin Neils came to me again. <laughs> I don't know why the chat keeps doing that. It's just really lucky, Liz. It's not like Erin and me are having like some really exciting back channel. <laughs> no, I click chat and then it just, I don't know, it suddenly selects you. So apologies. That's okay. And then it defaults mine to sending back to you. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let me so does it need two-thirds sure. acceptance or does it need a quorum vote and a need majority? Eight. Need eight. Do, do we need eight positive votes or do we need a simple or two-thirds majority of a quorum vote? My understanding is that we need eight out of 11 for the voting um, okay. to count. So um, given as I do not see a passing vote in here, um, suggest they change the name and reapply. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cube Vela. Uh... I think I saw somewhere that this came out of crossplane. Yeah, my team is involved in this project, and this is actually originally a crossplane stable project, and then moved to move as an independent project, basically like that. The last commit song it looks pretty familiar. The the author. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, but so this is being donated independently of the OM's back. Is that correct? Uh, everything will be donated together. Uh, basically, OM's back is already coupled with this project, like the API and the implementation. Yeah, it does say in the note somewhere. Where, where it's, am I uh, the first column. There we go. Um, the OM spec itself is now driven by Qvela and considered as part of this donation. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't come across the open application model before either, but. Uh... I have. Um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't realize. I think I hadn't come really come across Qvela as part of it. So I kind of the other way around from you. I ended up running into this uh, when I was looking at like dagger.io and shipa.io. Uh, so it's in the same category, right, uh, Harry? Yeah, same category. Basically like, um, so a platform service on top of a Kubernetes that go as the hybrid environment. All right, shall we, anyone got anything else to add or should we do votes? Uh, Harry, do you like the people uh, on this team? <laughs> Would the plan be to rename the org to Kuvela then, rather than OMDev? Uh, that is acceptable. Uh, if this I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking, uh, it's just, it seems weird to accept it. Right. Like it's, it, it seems to, if we accept it as Kivela, it seems more like better that the org is Kivela. If we accept it as OAM, then it's fine to be called OAM. I, I, I don't have any preference, but it's like, it seems, it seems just seems a little bit inconsistent or confusing potentially between which of them's the dominant part of it. Yeah, does that every- you know, OAM has a life on its own. Is, is there a, a, a potential future where OAM is a spec and keep Vader is, you know, just one implementation or something. Uh, so they are actually coupled right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, they are um, coupled together in this donation, basically like API and implementation. So there's no 
other implementations. And those things, there's motivation to promote any other implementation based on that. Yeah, so the, the original, the current plan is that the whole organization moved to uh, CNCF. Actually, it's including every right. component to make Kubevela to work, including it's, uh, you can see there are the mission controllers, it's yep. dashboard, it's command line tool. So that is the original plan. So how much rework do you have to do to, uh, it, I'm sure you have OM de dash dev in the imports or something, right? So that that's going to be your issue. Yeah, so renaming will require some work. That's actually the reason we didn't do that before <laughs> because right. it's will break some dependencies, but if we feel it's necessary, I'm totally okay. Uh, from my perspective, uh, just some technical issues to solve. There's no political or any non-technical blocker for that. Chris yeah. asks a good question, which is, does that mean that everything on the OAM dev is? And Harry said yes, yeah. and he said yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Should we move to a vote? I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about renaming. I just think it it might lead to confusion. It might be worth considering. That's all. Else. I know it's painful. <laughs> right, we discussed that before. Uh, so there is a plan to name that, but some maintainers raised concerns about that because um, we have production environment that rely on that path, which will make it, you know, take some time. But uh, I think we can raise the issue formally to discuss that, uh, I mean, in GitHub to see if folks are okay to renaming the uh, GitHub repo. I mean, one, possibility, GitHub organization. One, one possibility would be to sort of consider the project as like OAM and Vela kind of as if they were a combination project. Oh, sorry, OM and Cube Data. And Moby, I, yeah, I feel like the naming Docker, is not Docker. the most important thing. Right. Moby, Moby, Docker, Docker is still going on, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you <should> be fine. <laughs> Spiffy Spire type yeah. of. Uh, yeah, I can understand. Yeah. So the organization name is essentially, for example, like clone native application system or thing like that, which will make sense to cover what's inside currently in that organization. That is actually the idea. I will also, I, I will try to ask team to raise the issue, discuss what should be the right name for the organization, GitHub organization uh, during a sandbox uh, onboarding process. All right, the next one is K8up or Kateup or I don't know how you're quite supposed to pronounce it. Uh, they said ketchup. <laughs> ketchup? <laughs> That's very good. Um, I just wondered how much this is really a whole project and how much it's just a wrapper around, I think it uses something called Restic to do the actual backup. Like does a, is it enough to build an operator around something? Is that really a whole project? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have a full look, but actually we, we... We are looking for a component like this, but that does both the backup and restore. Uh, it's 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 not as trivial as it sounds. Uh, yeah, I'll plus one to that. I think uh, Valero is another uh, solution in this space, and they also use Restic. Okay. Yeah, and in both cases, we have issues with uh, with actual implementation of the persistent volumes and how much support they have for restoring from snapshots and things like this. So a general solution like this, it's uh, not too bad. Valero uh, rings a bell to me. Did we, is it in the sandbox already? I can't remember. I think so. It might have graduated out of sandbox. It's definitely something we need though, like in terms of our strategy of like managing data at that level, we, we don't have really hardened solutions in our landscape around these type of things. Doesn't Valero mean we should accept in, this based on that. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. It's not in CNCF. It's I think it's v VMware still has it, but Dims could confirm. VMware Tanzu org. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. I thought they gave it back when Joe was on the CNCF. I guess I'm imagining it. Probably another <laughs> behavior <laughs> special. Yeah, um, I thought that's not good there. Uh, if there is, uh, uh, you know, consensus for sure, I'll ask. I'll I'll check check with uh, folks and get back. There is a um a co Chris's comment about having to change the license. They do actually say in their kind of column P, we're currently using the BSD three clause license, but we're open to changing the license to Apache two. So I think that would be a that that sounds like that's Hopefully. only eight, only eighteen contributors to get signed off to change. Yeah, so not not too painful, but still painful. <laughs> Hundred and seventy two styles is not massive, but it's not nothing. Um, so uh, this project depends on a rest take with a W, uh, and I don't know if that is part of the submission. As a third party dependency, can you be a little more clear what you mean here, Jims? Um, so there is a one I pasted ah. link W R E S T I C. Oh, interesting. And that's part of the same organization. Yeah, uh, I was looking at the architecture and it mentioned that the operator is KTOP, uh, KTOP, whatever, and the RESTIC wrapper is W R E S T I C. So, right. So I guess there is a question over whether this donation includes the other one too. Yeah. That rustic part, the more rustic part. Does it say already? I guess we would want clarity on that. Yeah. Yeah, I I talked to them for the cross plane uh, review as well, and uh, and they mentioned they they were submitting. Uh, this this project so they're working on giving more information as this is now. So yeah. we need one more piece of information we, before we can vote. Yes. Which is whether or not this rustic yeah. thing is included. I mean the other the other possibility is to vote subject on to that being included. Uh, in general, we've asked for a confirmation about if we are not sure about what's in and what's out. Yeah. Okay. We don't really know All right. Let's let's go back on. and ask that then. Cube VIP. This is another load balancer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this one is being used a lot by a lot of people. So. Uh, yeah, I have heard of this one. Yeah. 385 stars. I think, yeah. And pretty popular with the crowd that does the cluster API stuff. Cool. Not got a lot of contributors. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's more probably enough, though, for and it was, yeah. 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 They look. I mean, it's mainly it's mainly it's mainly Dan. Yeah. Well, and Yasin from VMware, um, you know, he he was working with. He's the second one, um, so he's the one working with them to get it working with Cappy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other contributors are pretty small. But, you know, that's, that's part of the whole reason for Sandbox, isn't it? We vote. Uh, 
Justin, I'm assuming that is a, in fact a plus one. <laughs> what did I actually talk? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah my, my shift. <laughs> It's a shift plus one with a shift key. Keeps the confirmation. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one on the list is cube DL, uh, which looks as though it's a kind of cube flow alternative, which is kind of intriguing. Um, another Alibaba project. Very prolific. <laughs> Quick time check, though. We have roughly five minutes left in this call. Yeah, we'll just have to get through what we can. Got it. Yeah. Anyone, uh, I mean, 165 contributors and, sorry, 165 stars and seven contributors is quite, feels a little bit early. Yeah, I, I just started having a look at it today because they, they are very uh, vocal about how the features they have that Kubeflow doesn't have. But then it's true that it doesn't have a lot of contribution yet. So, I don't know. Yeah. I want to caution against, again, against using that as a metric for uh, Sandbox. Yeah. Fair. Widely deployed inside of Ollie, it probably has <laughs> some usage. <laughs> yeah, so th this project is also uh, my team is partially uh, participate. So uh, the, the overlap with Kubi deal with Kubi flow is the uh, TensorFlow job CRD. Uh, so the Kubi deal has its own CRD for TensorFlow job, uh, which is similar but uh, has difference with Kubi flow. But for other parts, uh, they do not have overlap. That means the Kubi flow components can be used with Kubi DL, for example, its workflow. And meantime, Kubi DL provided uh, several other features which do not exist in Kubi flow. So this, this is uh, the relationship between these two projects. It actually has explanation. It's really, for example, Kubi DL provide uh, tuning uh, CRDs, uh, a lot of tuning CRDs uh, besides chaining and serving, and they do not actually implement serving. Uh, so you can use Kubi uh, a key native to do serving, uh, just like Kubi flow did. So that, so basically like that. Um, yeah. Where in the why do you want to contribute question? It says. We at Alibaba have widely been using Kubernetes to manage large-scale deep learning workloads for many years. It doesn't actually say they use kubedl. I think they mean they are using kubedl. <laughs> That's the yeah. only option they have. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I, it looks super promising, but uh, but then the yeah the contributions are as we mentioned before, but yeah, the, the features are like ticking all the boxes. Should we take this one to a vote then? Um, all right, we are almost up at time. Let's see whether the next one looks like a really not, oh, the next one is um, Crustlet. Yeah, uh, so the thing here is go one, go to the ninth one, seven and nine go together, uh, Liz. Oh, right, Crossler and oh yeah, and Crater. Yeah, yes. so uh, the question that we need to ask them is, can they work as a single project, I think, and not as two separate projects? I wonder if they see Creator uh, as a SDK library for other Rust projects, not just for Crosslet. Yeah. Right. I think there is a question mark there over over libraries <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <That's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so start there, and then we'll see where it goes. Right. It's we, can, yeah, we can also we can also ask a question. What what other projects uh, use Crater besides Crosslet? Is there an adoption? Mm. Right. So does that mean Crater is a dependency for Crosslet? Yes. That's right. It is. And uh, and written by the same people. And yep. submit at the same time, so it's not right. like they're, it's not that they haven't adopted someone else's thing. They've written their own thing, but they're submitting them separately, mm. which is 
get a little bit unusual because normally you would put them together and maybe spin them off later if it seemed worthwhile rather mm. than starting them separately and then maybe yes. merging them later. It's going to be awkward if we, you know, they can't really be decoupled if they, well, it would be awkward to have, let's say, Crustlet in incubation, but Crater in sandbox. That would seem strange. Um, yeah, so maybe going back to them and asking why why Crater isn't part of Crustlet as a project. Okay, we're still at seven for QDL. So if anyone else wants to add a vote. Uh, they did answer look, see if uh, that question. Aaron sent it to me. <laughs> Liz, they did answer that question saying that um, in the Kubernetes ecosystem, there isn't a, a good library for um, talking to Kubernetes. And uh, that's where uh, this project creator is useful. Yeah. Right. I, I would still say they, they should come together as a single project and then we'll see where it goes later. And by single project, you mean like all live in the same GitHub yeah. org, yeah. essentially? Same, same repository, yeah, same GitHub org. Okay. Yeah. All right, I think cool. we are up to time. Uh, I think because we have several left, it means that next time we do a private meeting, we will go through mm -hmm. what's left on the spreadsheet. So apologies to anyone we haven't got to. Two weeks time, I think. Is it two weeks? Two weeks time. Um, I will check to make sure there's nothing else on the calendars, and I will put that in the follow up and also as a note on the spreadsheet. So thanks. Great. Super. Thanks, Have a great everyone. Time. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.